Hey, my name is Jim. I'm with CGC Sports Illustrated. I got a big box here with 10 slabs in it. And we're gonna look at them right now. Uh, you know the rules. I know what these issues are. I don't know what the grades are. So you and I are looking at these for the first time together. So you get my reaction to everything. Couple things. So, uh, um, first of all, I only collect newsstand issues. Uh, I don't collect subscription issues. So, when I refer to everything, whether it's pop reports or pricing or or any of that sort of stuff, um, I'm always talking about newsstand issues. Fine. If you want to collect subscription issues, that's cool. If you want the reason why I don't collect subscription issues and only collect newsstand issues, I got a ton of videos about it. Go back and watch some of my other videos on YouTube, and uh, and you'll get the whole lowdown. Let me take a look here. Um, another thing, a lot of new people coming into this hobby. So, uh, go back to front um, so that I don't see the grade. A lot of new people coming into this hobby. Uh, so, if you've got questions, uh, you can leave a comment here on YouTube. But what's actually better is if you shoot me a DM. So, DM me on social media, I'm, uh, on every platform. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, everything. Uh, it's the same username everywhere, CGC Sports Illustrated. If you got a question, you're like, I don't know what this is all about, or I don't know how to ship my magazines. I don't know how to you know, get a CGC account and get them graded. What should I be collecting? What should I be looking for? Any of that sort of stuff. DM me on social media. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, okay. Uh, so... Very interesting box here. Number one, all vintage. Love, love those vintage magazines. And I've got to, I've got to, got to remind myself. You know, it's tough to get a high grade even in modern issues. Almost impossible to get a high grade in vintage issues. So I'm, I'm prepping myself, setting my expectations for the proper grades um, that I should be getting. That's step number one. Uh, number two, these are all vintage. I got at least one Time magazine at least one, and I got another game program, which is also something new that I've been digging into, and so uh, and so that should be pretty interesting. 10 of these babies, let's do it. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, talking about setting expectations. 7.0 for this one isn't that bad. This is Lou Alcindor, this is Lou Alcindor and Willis Reed. This is from February 8th, um, 1971. So Willis Reed, Lou Alcindor, this is not a first cover for either. It's the second cover for Willis Reed. Uh, pop reports on this, there's a 9.0. There's one 7.0 now, this one. Um, and there's a 5.5. I, I, I love, especially those vintage NBA programs, I, or, or Sports Illustrated. I just think they're so cool. I love this cover because it's so clean. You got a small headline on top. Um, you've got, you know, blue in the back. You've got Willis Reed in the front. Um, it's just a good looking cover, and I like this one a lot. Obviously, I knew it had some problems. Geez, you can see that. Look at that. Okay, so this is something too. So some terms that I use a lot and that the hobby uses, a spine tick that breaks color. So a spine tick is when, you know, you go to open the magazine and the paper kind of bends and crinkles at a point, um, and when the color flakes off, that's what I mean when I say a spine tick that breaks color. Um, spine ticks can be fixed in pressing. Once they break color, that part can't ever be fixed in pressing and, and, and it's never going to be recovered. That's a pretty big one. Um, and a big reason why this one uh, got a 7.0. I've got a little bit of, uh, of light staining on the back. A couple other issues, but several big spine ticks that bring color. Doesn't take much to uh, knock your... Uh, Knock your issue down several points. Okay, good one. Man, I love Lou Alcindor. I just love, love that vintage NBA stuff. Next up. Oh, that is. <laughs> Expectations or not. What the heck is that? 5.5. Um, yeah, I got a huge bend. There's other problems with this one. Okay, so this is uh, it's Joe Namath. Not his first cover, not at all. Um, this uh, came out on October 9th, 1972. Pop reports, there are two 9.4s. Uh, there's a 7.0, and then there's this 5.5. I just love this cover. Um, great close-up shot. Joe's smiling. You got the Jets helmet there. Uh, it's just a really cool-looking cover to me. 5.5. Not a cool-looking grade. But that's all right. This is vintage. It's all good. I just need some better ones, that's all. I just need some better ones. Okay, next up. Oh! 
now I'm, I, I don't care about the grade in this one. Uh, if you guys have seen some of my other podcasts and some, especially my social media, this is one of my absolute favorite Sports Illustrated in the entire hobby. This is Evil Knievel. It's the only time he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. It comes from September 2nd, 1974. This issue, I love everything about it. It For starters, it, he just, I mean, he's a baller. OG baller right there. It screams 70s. Look at the size of that cuff on that jacket. And he's got even he's got his initials on it. Look at the size of that collar. You've got that kind of V in the middle, take off on the American flag, the huge belt buckle, and to cap it all off, a pimp cane. Evil Knievel was an absolute snapshot in time, and he just is everything 70s, in my opinion. I love the stories about him. He's broken every single bone in his body, all 212 of them, or however many we have. Uh, I mean, he was crazy. He was insane. Jumping the fountains at Caesars and riding motorcycles over buses. And, and, and I love the fact that he made a Sports Illustrated cover in 1974. Um, I do know the guy that has the that had the 9.2. He offered to sell it to me, and uh, I'm kicking myself for not buying it because I should have bought it. Because this is one of my absolute all time uh, favorite covers. Not in love with that grade, uh, but 5.5. But this is the first time I own several copies of this. This is the first one I've ever gotten back from CGC. Um, so that's a good one. 5.5. Evil Knievel. It's, it's impossible to find. I mean, you can't find them anywhere in newsstand. They're beautiful. It's just, it's just, I love every stinking thing about that cover. Next up. Oh, now that doesn't... No, man, I shouldn't have talked about keeping my expectations in check because that's just not who I am. I cannot do it. This is a cool cover. Um, Time Magazine... Joe Namath. So the second appearance of Joe Namath on this unboxing video. Um, so I've gotten into a lot more Time magazines. I think they're really cool when they put a big athlete on the cover. You know, the Jets haven't won a Super Bowl in 69. Uh, you know, when Namath famously you know, called his shot and guaranteed that they'd win the Super Bowl. Uh, just a very cool cover. Um, this is from October 16th, 1972. Uh, there is a 7.5, and then there's this one. Um this is just such a cool looking cover. Uh, and you've got all these other quarterbacks. I, I went through this, so I'm going to see if I can. Th that's Unitas. That's Fran Tarkenton. That's Terry Bradshaw. I can't remember who the other two are. I did some research on this one before I sent it in just because I wanted to figure out who the who the quarterbacks were at the time for all that team. And then obviously Joe Namath in the middle. I've, I've always um, disliked. The Sports Illustrated covers, where instead of a photo, it was a portrait. Um, Johnny Unitas' first covers like that. Jim Brown's first covers like that. I, I just don't care for them. Just, just me. The caricature ones like this, I, I, I like more. I'd still like a real action shot of the athlete instead. But these caricature drawings, there was a couple caricature covers for Michael Jordan. Um, there's some others out there. But I just thought this uh, issue of Time Magazine... Uh, with Joe Namath on the cover was pretty cool. That's his first cover, by the way. First uh, Time Magazine cover for Joe Namath. All right, come on now. Come on now. We need a number that we can pop here for some fun. <laughs> oh, I don't care. I love this cover. This is a, I, this cover has totally gone under the radar. That is Stan Musial and Ted Williams. This is the second cover for both of them. Came out on July 8th, 1957. Um, there are a couple 7.5s. There's a 6.0. There's a 5.5. And then I've got this here at this 4.5. Uh, this was the 1957 All-Star Game preview. Uh, Stan Musial was elected to 24 All-Star Games. Uh, three World Series champions. Williams was in 19 All-Star Games. Both of them served in World War II in the middle of their careers. Um, so God knows how their stats would have been and how many more World Series and, and All-Star games they would have been in if, it, if they hadn't ended up serving um, uh, during World War II in the middle of their careers. I just think this, you don't see very many of these. I think this is an underrated cover. Um, like I said, July 8th, 1957. It's the second cover for both. Generally, 
Um, the second cover for an athlete ends up being the second most collectible. Everybody wants the first cover, sure. But the second cover ends up being the next most collectible. And to have two big athletes like that, both their second cover on the same one, uh, just thought that was pretty cool. Next up. 6.5. Okay, this one was pretty cool. I just, uh, this is the Green Bay Packers and the uh, Cleveland Browns. It's from January 10th, 1966. So this is uh, the, you know, right after the Super Bowl, this is the issue that came out. Actually, it wouldn't have would have been the Super Bowl. would have been the NFL championship because the first Super Bowl was in 69. So uh, uh, very cool cover. I'm not even quite sure who that is on the cover there. Uh, Jim Taylor of the Browns. Or that's Jim Taylor of the Packers. They're featured on the cover. I just thought it was a really cool cover, and I had this, and I wanted to get it graded. 6.5. Uh, there are now two 6.5s. Those are the highest graded. There's a 5.0 and a 4.5. Packers won that NFL championship game 23-12. to Beat the Browns. Very cool cover. Okay, next up. Yeah, I knew this one wasn't going to be great, and I don't care at all. It, it, okay, so collectability aside... You guys know I'm a Chicago guy, so I'm a huge Bear fan. This is Dick Butkus. This isn't his first cover. It's his first pro cover. Uh, but I don't care who you're a fan of. From an, a pho photography standpoint and from just a work of art standpoint, this is one hell of a badass cover. Uh, 5.0. Oh, look at that! First professional cover. I got my labeling on that one. Again, um... Ask for labeling, first cover, first pro cover, anything else you want on the label. Once CGC determines that, you know, what you sent them is accurate and that is his first pro, first pro cover, everybody else now that gets this issue graded, it will have that labeling on there that says first pro cover and it'll be noted that way in the census too. This is, I, I, I can't talk enough about this issue. It is so badass. I mean, look at Dick Butkus. He was the meanest, nastiest man on the planet and it looks like it right there. Uh, this was taken during a Bears and Packers game. Amazing NFL rivalry. Uh, Pop reports on this. Uh, first of all, so uh, September 21st, 1970 is when this came out. There are two 9.0s. There are three 6.0s. You can tell how condition sensitive this is. Got a couple 9.0s and then nothing until you get to 6.0. Uh, there's some 5.5s and then uh, this 5.0. This cover is just amazing. I, this photograph was taken during a game in 1969 against the Packers at Soldier Field. Also interesting about this, I'm not an NFT, I'm not a crypto guy and an NFT guy, but uh, there is a company out there that does have a license with Sports Illustrated to create some of the covers and, and, and sell them as NFTs, and this is one of them. I bought a few of them. They were 25 bucks each. I figured, what the hell? I don't know anything about NFTs, but I thought I'd give it a shot just because... Um, just because I'm a Sports Illustrated guy. So I cannot say enough about that cover. Dick Butkus, first pro cover. All right, next up. Okay, not bad. 7.0, Wilt Chamberlain. This is the uh, Champions at Last issue. So this one came out on May, 17th, uh, May 15th, 1972. Uh, this 7.0, it's a pop one of one, none higher. Why is that? Well, it's uh, 50 years old, number one. Number two, massively condition sensitive. I feel like a broken record, but it's important to know this, especially when you're kind of trying to self-grade your issues and determine whether you should send them into CGC. There is so much black ink on this cover, and when that black ink is on the edges especially, and especially the spine, what happens is it's just like having a black car. If you got dirt on there, it's going to be easy to spot. If you got a black ink cover, any flaw, it's going to be easy to spot, and the, and the graders are going to pick up on it every single time. Um, you've got a lot of color on the back of it as well. So uh, that's why this is a, a hard issue to get in a high grade. So you, you know, might be surprised. Uh, but, yeah, this is a pop one of one, none higher. Wilt Chamberlain, 1972 with that 7.0. That is a beauty. That is a beauty. All right, just one more. Box went quick. We ran through these. 6.5. Okay, uh, interestingly on this one, um, this is Elvin Hayes' first cover. That's him, 44, there taking a jump shot. By the way, that is Lou Alcindor. 
uh, playing for UCLA there, uh, guarding him. So this is Elvin Hayes and his first cover. It is from uh, January 29th, 1968. Pop reports on this. There's an 8-0, there's a couple 7-5s, there's a 7-0, and, uh, and then there's this 6.5 right there. Did I get my labeling? I did not, even though I requested it. I said first Elvin Hayes cover, but uh, but they didn't give me my labeling on there. So decent box for uh, for vintage issues. You guys know I love these vintage issues. Um, in a pretty good rut here where I'm going to be getting uh, regular shipments in from CGC. So we'll be getting a lot of these unboxing videos. Like and comment and subscribe here on YouTube. Follow me on social media. Join our Facebook group. Uh, it's uh, it's a private group, but we let anybody in as long as you you know don't be a jerk or anything like that. I have had to kick one person out uh, for trying to scam some people, but it's a really good group. It's all about learning and just kind of showing off our stuff. So go to Facebook groups and just search CGC Sports Illustrated. And thanks for watching the video today. Appreciate it.